the beads they valued most, speak to us today. There is a stone bead of great importance to pre-Hispanic Philippines that remains unidentified by modern scholars. Mentioned in the Boxer Codex, a 16th century illustrated explorations account that included Southeast Asia. The beads called Bulaganes and Bahandines by our ancestors have somehow been lost to us today. According to the writer of the Codex, the natives possess much gold. It is believed that they have many mines in the mountains, but they do not want to show them to the Spaniards, fearing that the Spaniards would appropriate these. They also have some stones that they value highly called Bulaganes and Bahandines, and these are worn as jewelry. It is not known, nor can they explain, whether they get them from a mine or where they are found. All they say is that they have inherited them from their ancestors, and thus esteem and hold them at high price. The stones are black and white. World travelers and traders, the Spaniards were familiar with the use of beads as a form of international currency. Antonio Pigafetta recorded Magellan's use of crystal beads for commercial exchange and to win political favor. They recognized and noted the precious and semi-precious stones worn by the peoples that they encountered. Interestingly, when they saw the Bulaganes and Bahandines beads valued by the indigenous peoples of the Philippine Islands, they had no idea what they were. Our ancestors could not tell of the beads' origins. They only knew that these beads were very old and treasured by them and their forefathers. They hid them from the Spaniards like they hid the gold mines, for fear that these beads would be taken by the colonizers. They hid them so well and kept it such a secret that modern-day Filipinos have no idea what Bulaganes and Bahandines beads were. The writer of the Codex unwittingly gives us clues. The ones he saw were black and white made from stone, of unusual, unnatural appearance, with an unknown origin even hundreds of years ago, and of extremely high value. There is one ancient black and white stone bead found in the Philippines that fits all the clues. Tribal Filipinos call them heaven's beads and are not willing to sell them for money for fear that it would bring evil and misfortune. Barter trade, however, was acceptable to the spirits that guarded the beads. These ancient agate beads, also known as Z beads, are most often seen in black and white and are of mysterious origin. No one seems to know who made these beautiful stone beads. Decorated with unnatural eye patterns, symbols and lines, designs that were not painted, carved or inlaid, but permeated into the stone itself. Myths surround this mysterious and highly valued bead. Some say that they were made from meteorites refined by holy men. Others, that they were imperfect jewelry of the gods cast down to earth. There are those who claim that the gods dropped them from the heavens to stop a bad time of disease and trouble. The Codex tells us that these beads were used in burial customs. The diseased carry a set of bahandines and bulaganes, five large, the others medium size and the bulaganes are very good. Five sets of bulaganes and bahandines of many kinds wrapped around the stomach, giving us more clues. At least two sizes, large, medium, and possibly small. Two types, and each type with several kinds. Bulaganes, which was very good, and may have been considered higher value than the bahandines. There are two types of heaven's beads. Pure Z, most valued and desired, commonly black and white or dark to light brown, and white, agate stone, decorated with ancient symbols and eye patterns in recognizable motifs. Chongzi, secondary to purezi, may be decorated with stripe or left undecorated, but cut to show the natural or enhanced agate banding. This bead is worn by tribal women on weddings and grand celebrations. Kalinga tribes consider the agate stone beads as the most valued and are said to be gangao, over a thousand years old. Two uses, jewelry and ritual burial, which implies a mystical or spiritual significance held by these beads. Aside from being worn as a prestige item, heaven's beads were also used in ancient fire purification rituals practiced by both Hindu and Buddhist leaders. This ritual produced the dragon scale appearance found in some beads which add to their mystique and value. The origin of the heaven's beads may lie in the patterns and symbols they bear on their faces. Perhaps the craftsmen 
who had the technology to make these treasured beads, also left evidence of who they were. The markings on the beads were compared to Baibayan, Oracle Bone Script, Sanskrit, Hebrew, and Phoenician writing, but it was only upon learning that the Phoenician alphabet had been derived from an even older script that the match was found. Due to the Phoenician artisan's method of balancing their design symmetrically, their inclination to work with geometric shapes, and their high level of craftsmanship, the designs are not immediately recognizable as a type of alphabetic script. Motifs were often mirrored and reflected around the bead. Sometimes they were repeated upside down or connected to itself, or simply repeated again and again. The Proto-Canaanite alphabet that preceded the Phoenician alphabet could be considered a type of transitional script. Although the letters could be read phonetically, each letter also conveyed a message or a meaning, possibly two. Following is a comparison of the Proto-Canaanite alphabet with heaven's beads motifs. Proto-Canaanite Beth, meaning house or earth, compared to heaven's beads earth motif, symbolizing the four corners of the earth. He is a man calling Lo, Hoi, compare it to big man motif, representing authority. Dalamed is a staff or goad, compare it to the Rui, the staff of power. Mem represents water and chaos. Compare it to the wave motif, water, waves, or teeth. Ayin, Omicron, ice or celestial body. Ice, meaning varies with the number of eyes. Pe, meaning mouth, word, or speak. Pudai, similar to ice. Teth, Tetha, surrounding the whole earth. The Svastika or Hotu, light shining from all angles. Sad, San, plant or fish hook. The body leaf establishes good and removes the bad, also appears in the heaven's beads in the ancient Phoenician fish hook character. Tan, sigma, a compound bow, bird or rock, enhances communication. Nun, nahas, snake, lightning motif, destroys ignorance. Dalit, delta, dig, fish pathway, tent door. Hill mount motif, stability, removal of obstacles. Tav. Tau, sign, covenant, owner's mark. Cross motif is often combined with other motifs. Kappa, cup, calf, hand of God, open palm. Lotus motif, beauty growing in the hardest conditions. Zayin, zeta, plow or weapon, cut off. Pestle, brings healing. The double lines at the end of many beads may be another variation of the zayin or zeta often found in combination with the eyes or ayin, is the gimel, gamma, that looks like a capital L that could be written upside down, on its side, or reflected. The proto-Canaanite Aleph, Alpha, drawn like an angled ox head, represented strength and leadership, appeared to have been straightened and symmetrically balanced to a circle with horns, and placed over what looks like a squarish beth, earth. Recognized in Southeast Asia as the Mammon god of wealth and abundance, this may be a representation of the bull-headed Phoenician god of abundance, Baal. An Aleph over the Bet logogram may have borne a message of Baal's strength and rule over the earth. Under Baal's left armpit in this Phoenician representation is the Tet, sun cross symbol. Between his horns is the celestial wheel symbol of the Phoenician goddess, a symbol of great significance. To Jainism, Hinduism, and Buddhism, the Dhammajak represents the wheel of life, creation, and destruction, similar to the Phoenician goddess Tanit, who ruled both life and death. Proto-Canaanite script was significantly simpler to learn than the thousands of Chinese characters or Egyptian hieroglyphs. With just around 22 letters, with normally no indication of vowels, it became an open door for the common man to record his daily life. In many sites where Proto-Canaanite writing had been found, they were in the form of graffiti, etched crudely in the rocks along the roads, mines, or workplaces. But did the ancient Phoenicians even have the technology to decorate agate beads with designs permeated into the stone itself? Phoenician agate and carnelian beads displayed in the National Museum of Beirut show us that they did. Proto-Canaanite script, also known as Proto-Sinatic script, 
first appeared around 2000 BC and was used until around 1050 BC, when it appeared to have been refined and simplified. Before it changed, the writing of the Hebrew, Phoenicians, and the Canaanites were pretty much indistinguishable. In 1946, a pottery shard found in Tel Aviv dating back to 800 BC records that 30 shekels of gold imported from the land of Ophir was offered to a Canaanite god, showing that the Canaanites saw Ophir as a real land and source of gold. Both ancient Phoenician and Hebrew histories record a joint venture between King Hiram of Tyre and King Solomon of Israel to the lands of Tarshish and Ophir. Could the Bulaganes and Bahandines, heaven's beads, have been used by them to trade for the valuable metal, a form of international currency in that distant age. Marcus Garvey, first president general of the Universal Negro Improvement Association said, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. Thank you for joining us in opening the book of our past.